Good morning, and welcome to Holy Trinity Lutheran Church on Sunday, uh, on Sunday, uh, February 13th, uh, 2022. It is the sixth Sunday after Epiphany. It is snowing outside here in southern New England. I'm Pastor John Polk coming to you from northeastern Massachusetts. And I'd like to begin this morning by sharing with you the reading from the Holy Gospel, the Gospel according to St. Luke, the eighth chapter. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him, and he healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator, from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and from our sustainer, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Why should we care? That is, why should we care about the Uyghurs? Have you heard of them? Their name is spelled U-Y-G-H-U-R-S and pronounced Uyghurs. According to the Chinese government, they are an ethnic minority living in a northwest province of China, and the Uyghurs' history in that region date back at least 4,000 years. Since the 10th century, they have been predominantly Muslim, yet the Chinese president says all religions in China should be Chinese in orientation. The Uyghurs have a long history of resisting assimilation, resisting giving up their culture, resisting giving up their religion, resisting giving up their very identity. But why should we care? In recent years, the world community has become shockingly aware of what the Chinese government is reported to be doing to the approximately 12 million Uyghurs. The United States government and other major countries call it genocide. Amnesty International and the Human Rights Watch group call it crimes against humanity. Reports indicate that over a million people have been detained against their will. Families are being broken apart and sent to re-education camps. Hundreds of thousands of people have been sent to prisons. Those who have escaped report that women are being forced to be sterilized on a massive basis. Forced labor is trapping women and children, their culture, their family life, their religion, their work, their history, their homes, their very identity are all being stripped away and stolen, all because they are an ethnic minority in a country where power lies in the brutal hands of people who are different than they are. But why should we care? These Uyghurs are, are on the other side of the world. I cannot imagine any of us have ever met a Uyghur or even know what they might look like. We have enough problems in our own country with people who are labeled different. Why should we care about the Uyghurs? 
Jesus came down and stood on a level place with a great crowd all around him, including his disciples and, and people from all over Judea, Jerusalem, and the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And do you know why they came to be near him? It was amazing. He healed them of their diseases and those who were troubled and upset. He calmed them and made them well and made them feel peaceful. In fact, everyone there was trying to, trying to touch him for one reason and one reason alone. This, this great and good power came out of him. They could actually feel it and he healed all of them. All of them. Isn't that amazing? An example of good power. Why should we care about the Uyghurs? Why should Jesus care about all those people, most of them different, lots of them not even Jewish, and, and they were from all over? Judea, Jerusalem, and way over there on the coast of Tyre and Sidon? But then did you notice what Jesus did? He blessed particular kinds of people. He blessed specific people in specific conditions. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the hungry. Blessed are the grieving. Blessed are the persecuted. The poor. The grieving. The hungry. The persecuted. The weaker. Now this is a rare occurrence when it comes to Jesus and people in general. This is a rare example of Jesus separating people into groups, of Jesus dividing people into conditions, of Jesus singling out people in different circumstances. Listen to this. After all those blessings comes the curse. Woe to you who are rich. Woe to you who are full now. Woe to you who are laughing now. Woe to you when all speak well of you. But what does woe really mean? Woe to you. It could mean something like watch out, like a warning. Watch out, you who have enough and then some. Or better yet, it could mean something like wake up. Wake up, you who have more than enough stuff. Wake up, you who don't have to worry about where your next meal comes from. Wake up. You who are for the most part happy and content, wake up. You who have a good reputation. Who is Jesus talking about this morning? Who is Jesus pointing his finger at? Who is Jesus telling to wake up or watch out or get with it or examine your own heart or take a look at your life? Who is Jesus speaking to? He is speaking to me. That's right, Jesus is speaking to me. I have plenty. In fact, by most worldly standards, I am wealthy. My belly is full. I'm trying to lose weight rather than trying to search for my next meal. I am content, happy. And for the most part, people say nice things about me. I have a pretty good reputation. And it is to me then Jesus is talking. Is Jesus talking? To you. There's no getting around it. These are some powerful words from Jesus. After all, in today's story, there's some powerful stuff happening among Jesus and all those people. Remember, people were clamoring just to touch him. He healed. He calmed. He restored. He exorcised. He made people well. There was some powerful stuff going on. It was real. His words hit where it hurts. And it would be folly for us to minimize them or look the other way or, or consider that Jesus isn't really talking about us. Jesus is talking about us. Jesus is talking about me. Jesus is talking about you. And his words have power. And his words touch our hearts like a dagger. The prophet Jeremiah in our Old Testament lesson says something remarkable and fitting and disturbing. He says, the heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and, and search the heart to give to all according to their ways 
according to the fruit of their doings. My heart wants to deceive me because I want to stay comfortable. But the Lord, the Lord searches my heart and finds the truth. And the truth is, for example, I have found it pretty easy to not really care at all about the Uyghurs people in that northwest province of China, a world away from me and my comfort. I've heard about them, but never really cared until, you know what the turning point was? The moment I started caring, it was when I heard, when I read these words from Jesus who was talking directly to me when he said, woe to you, who are rich. Watch out, you whose belly is full. Wake up, you whom people think well of. How will these powerful words of Jesus speak to you today? After all, that's, that's why we, we gather on Sunday morning. That's why we, we click and watch the sermon, to be changed by the power of the gospel, to be changed by the power of the sacrament, and I don't mean just changed sentimentally or intellectually, but actually transformed into brand new people, a brand new creation. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the German Lutheran pastor killed by the Nazis during World War II, wrote this while in prison. If we want to be Christians, if we want to follow Jesus, we must share in Christ's large-heartedness, in his liberating love for all who suffer. His liberating love for all who suffer. Look around you. Really, look around you. Beneath what you see, underneath what you see, maybe, maybe someone who is suffering. Look around you in your neighborhood. What's going on behind closed doors? Who is suffering? Look around you with a large heart. Do you see who is in pain? Look around you with a liberating love for all who suffer. Jesus is pointing his finger at me. And at least in this instance, I think, I think I finally get it. These words of Jesus convict. They convict me. Jesus convicts me. I am guilty. And so it is. And what about you? And it's tempting next to ask, okay, now what? Now what do I do? What's next? What can I do? But this is the reality. Hear more words from Jesus. That's what's next. Hear more words from Jesus. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on the account of the Son of Man. That, my friends, is where we stand.